Hello and welcome to another Jason May Draw. Today I'm going to show you how comic artists flat artwork. For those of you who don't know, comic book flatting is the process of putting down the basic shapes and colors so that later either you or a comic colorist can choose the proper colors and do all of the shading. So when you are a colorist or a flatter, you will get some line artwork from the artist through an email or Dropbox or some similar method. Nowadays, it can be done with brushes and all sorts of things. You may even get it on a layer uh, that has a transparent background already, but we're going to assume that you got a black and white piece of artwork like traditionally digitally art digital artists have done for quite some time now. So here's my line art couple things I want to go over real quick is that you need to make sure that you don't have any feathering on your lasso tool or your marquee tool. You don't want anti-aliasing on any of this either. We're going to turn off anti-aliasing. I don't use the marquees too much. You may use them for this. We will not. So let's take a look real quick. The lasso right now has one pixel of feathering. So what that means is when I put down some color in this shape and I want to put another color next to it, where these two meet, you end up with this gapping of color, which is not good when you are flatting or if you're a colorist and you get flats and they are like this, you're not too happy because the whole point of having nice flat basic color shapes is so you can put in new colors where they are needed. So when we take that feathering off, it's at zero, there's no anti-aliasing. We do the exact same thing. We put some red down, fill that with a paint bucket quick, go right up next to it, same lasso tool with no anti-aliasing and no feathering. We'll drop green in for consistency's sake. Zoom right in and it's very nice. So now if I want to change that red color to blue and I pop it in there, you have a nice tight line there. There's no extra colors. If I had done that with the feathered, there would be a big white line there. It would keep changing colors as I changed the colors and it would be just a mess underneath your line work. So let's take what we've just learned and move on to actual flatting. All right, that's a problem. So we're just going to go back in history until we have white line art again. All right, there are a few ways you can do this. Since I do have black and white artwork, we know that if I select the white, and as you can see, not all the white is selected, that is because this box here, contiguous, is not chosen. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right because I've never heard anyone say it, but that's how I've always pronounced it. We click that off, it'll click, uh, it'll select all of the same color. You can hit delete, and now you have all black line art. But let's say that's not really an option. Maybe your artwork is feathered. So what we're going to cut the artwork out. I'm going to put it in its own channel by doing a new layer and paste. When I control left click on the alpha channel that I just created, I can then go into layers here. I will select inverse because right now the white is selected. And then I'm going to either use the paint bucket to fill it or alt backspace, which will fill it with the foreground color. Now you can see that our artwork is separated. I'm going to quickly drop some white in the background. Now our line art layer is separate, so we can turn it on and off. And the first thing that I would like to do is just outline the largest shapes. And to start off, the largest shape is going to be this B character. I will probably speed this process up so you don't have to sit through it, but I'm using a lasso tool with zero feathering. And I'm going to outline. And you can see as I outline, if you zoom in, you want to get as close to the center as possible to this black line. That way, if you get this printed with plates for whatever reason, 
if some of the plates shift around, the line art is still going to cover up that seam where the colors are. I don't think you have to worry about that as much nowadays with digital. Most stuff is digital now, but just in case, we're just going to go over that. So using the shift key with the lasso tool, you can continue to outline this shape until you outline all of the B. Okay, now that we have the entire body outlined, we can choose a color to put down. It doesn't matter too much. We know that bees are yellow, typically. There are a variety of bees. But we will select the paint bucket tool and we will dump that color in there. It looks as though there's a little bit of white here still. So what we want to do is select the pencil tool, not the brush tool, but the pencil tool. You want to make sure that your pencil tool does not have any smoothing on or anything that might make the edges soft. Because again, even with this, uh, if you fill something that you drew with a pencil, you want to make sure that there's no halo there like we saw earlier with the uh, red circle. All right. Now that we have this basic shape of the BL set. We can take a look at it. That is a flat color. That is one of the basic shapes in this particular panel. Now this panel I just kind of threw together, this B I drew during the Jason May Clubhouse, and I added this little honey bar for him to fill up his glass. Obviously my honey container is a little small, but it's just for the example of flatting here. The next thing you want to do is start splitting this large basic shape up into smaller shapes. So what you can do now is take your lasso tool and start slicing off objects. Right now I'm going to slice off the wing. I'm going to make the wing a light yellow. I'm going to use the paint bucket tool and drop it in. And since we don't have feathering on or anti-aliasing on, if you look very close, we're good to go. And now if I want to change that wing to a different color, I can quickly and easily. Or if the colorist that I send this to wants to change things, he or she can. I'm going to go through the rest of the B real quick here and knock out all the other basic shapes. Now let's take a look right here real quick. Uh, when you're in a spot like this and you only need to fill in one color and you have two colors next to each other, you see we have white and we have yellow next to each other. When we look at this without the line art, you can see that we don't have to trace this line again because we know that we have a nice hard edge there already. So if I wanted to make his lips blue for whatever reason and I drop that in there with a the paint bucket, it only fills there. I don't have to waste time going in here, and you'll get better at that the more you practice. But that is a big time saver. Next thing we're going to do is the cloak, and it's the same deal with that. I'm only going to focus on where it needs to be broken up. All right, let's take a look at the cloak. I'm going to fill it. As you can see, I didn't need to be careful here. We have the white bordering the yellow, we have the light yellow bordering the yellow, the white and the blue bordering the yellow. So I know when I look, when I fill that with green, it's just going to go to that line because it's filling that basic flat shape. That is what is nice about doing proper flats, is later on if you need to adjust colors, you come right back in and just fix them one by one. All right, here's another good spot to stop for a second and have a quick little chat. We have the same deal going on here in terms of dropping in color. Now this is the under part of the cloak. And what I'll usually do if I'm flatting for somebody else is I won't use that exact same cloak color. I'll change it a little bit or I'll make it a bit darker because I know it's in the background. And I will fill that in. So now when the colorist or you come in later, you can just select those separately which is very convenient. Another thing that you might notice when you're doing flats or you're coloring for somebody is you may find a mistake here or there 
If it's yourself, definitely change it. Uh, double check with artists or editors if you're not sure if they want you to change things. But I often end up cleaning up bits and pieces of inked artwork when I do work for other people. So let's continue filling in more shapes. Here's another spot to kind of check out. Uh, when I do a flat on something like this where there's a broken line and you're not positive where things are going to go, I draw it as if it is actually there and I'll let the colorist decide later what's going to happen with that spot, whether they're going to fade it in or however they feel like dealing with it, but that gives them something nice to grab onto. All right, let's slow down and take a look right here. As you can see, I was a little sloppy with my lasso tool. So I want to take my pencil tool. Again, you want to make sure that it's 0% smoothing, no feathering, and you want to fill that in. So if we take a look under the line art, we can double check and make sure. It's nice and jagged. There's only two colors there. There's no feathering. Let's see how the flats are coming along. They're starting to look pretty interesting. Let's pop that back up and finish the flats. All right, so it seems as though our B is completely flatted, which is great. Now, typically when I do flat, <clears throat> and I did not start this way here, I'm gonna grab my marquee tool, it's at feather zero, of course, and I'm just gonna lay this out. Typically I do the panel uh, completely before I do anything else. I'll do one big rectangle. I did not do that this time, which is not the end of the world. But if you look, we can go in here and everything is nice and tidy. There aren't any weird white gaps in between any of these basic shapes. Everything butts right up against another color. It's really nice. This is a little wonky over here. That can be fixed if needed. I'm not going to get too hung up on it because I know that I will be coloring this. Uh, another thing you could see when I did the background, these did not fill in. If I had done the panel background first, and filled in the background, those would already be blue, which would save time. Saving time is very helpful in comics. Uh, you get paid by the page usually, and the faster you do it, the better your pay grade. So let's pause a second right now and check out this spigot of our honey dripper. I'm going to go in here with the pencil brush and change the size. You can change the side with the bracket keys. And I'm just going to fill this in. A lot of small stuff you're going to want to fill in with the pencil tool. Again, making sure that it's not anti-alias and fill it right on in. We know this is honey dripping out, so we'll make it like a golden yellow color. Fill that in. So that looks pretty good. All right, let's take a look at this. Let's hide the line art. You can see that our artwork is fully flatted. It looks great, it's very tidy. If you're doing work for somebody else, you may wanna go in and make sure that these are all cleaned up because that can become a problem sometimes. You definitely can give yourself a lot more leeway if you're gonna be the colorist on this. When you're sending something out to somebody else though, you want it to be as clean and nice as possible. You want the colors to be somewhat naturalistic. I have gotten some flats from people where maybe they sent me a B and it looked like this, which it, it's fine, but if you use more naturalistic colors, the colorists may not actually have to change your colors if they're decent enough or if they're pretty close. Or if they miss something, and it's a strange color and gets printed, that can be a problem. I have seen that happen before, where like a very small glass in the background is bright pink for some reason, when if they had just put down a light blue, it would have been much more likely to look normal after being printed. Other things you can do if you want, you can select a color that's next to another color. 
and I'm going to hide the uh, hide the line art so you can see what I'm doing here. This is about where it is. I'm only doing this just so you can see what it looks like behind it. You have a nice, you know, color border here where they butt together nicely. So we'll fill that in. So now you can see, again, that's nice and tidy. The tidier you can get it, the better. So that pretty much concludes my tutorial on how to flat. I will use this same picture in a shading tutorial soon, where I will show you how the colorists will be picking these things and changing them and shading them. One last thing that you can do that some colorists do, I don't typically do this, but when I remember to, sometimes it saves me. They will actually select the entire canvas. They will copy it. They will go into channels like we did with the line art earlier. They will make a new layer and they will paste the flats into here. So later on, when they're working, if something horrible should happen, like they accidentally lay a gradient down. Let's see my gradient tool it's where the paint bucket is let's say they accidentally lay a gradient down on their flats layer which I should have labeled flats that's another good thing to do make sure you keep things tidy so what happens with that is you try to select it and you're in trouble however if you happen to save that in a gray alpha channel you can go in later and choose it and head back use the eyedropper tool to pick the correct color and fill it back in. I'm going to use Alt Backspace right now to use the foreground color. And now RB is back to normal color. That can really save you if you happen to mess up a flats thing. But we'll talk about that more later. I want to thank you guys again for taking your time and spending it with me. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. What other comic creating videos would you like to see on my channel? Please ask questions and leave suggestions in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. That'll help me help you guys create more art. Take care.